The President Obama releases his budget today following some rare good news for the nation's economy, a far stronger than expected surge in growth last quarter, 5.6%. That's the fastest rate of growth in six years and an almost unimaginable turn from 2008 when the economy first began to crumble. The architect of the controversial plan that pulled our financial system from the brink of collapse is former Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson. He's written a new memoir out today called On the Brink, and he joins us now. Good to see you, Mr. Secretary. George, good to be here. So, so the, those, those numbers we saw on Friday, 5.6%. Is the economy back, and is it because of the actions you took back in 2008? The economy, the financial system is stable, and the economy is is uh, is recovering right now. It's got a good ways to go, and in terms of the actions that we took, I have no doubt that uh, they uh, helped us avoid disaster. Thank Not not everyone is convinced yet. The uh, inspector general for the bailout, the TARP funds, Neil Borowski, issued a report over the weekend saying the bailout plan failed to achieve. Its goals. He points out the banks still have incentives to take big risks. The too big to the institutions are still too big to fail, and bonuses are still very high. He goes on to write, even if TARP saved our financial system from driving off a cliff back in 2008, absent meaningful reform, we are still driving the same winding road, but this time in a faster car. Well, again, uh, the I, I have no doubt that uh, that the economy is 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 on a path to recovery uh, I believe that uh, that if we hadn't taken the actions we taken we could have seen unemployment rates uh, up at the levels we saw at the Great Depression 25 percent 25 percent yeah it, when, when George when the when I knew the system was on the brink when the markets froze and there was a time when I knew if if the system had collapsed Middle-sized companies, large companies, mainstream companies wouldn't have been able to to raise the funding they needed to pay their suppliers, to pay their employees. Uh, the employees wouldn't have been able to uh, to pay their bills. This would have rippled through the economy. But have we fixed the problems that got us into this fix in the first place? President Obama is laying out a number of steps: more fees on banks. He wants to get at this problem of too big to fail. We have not fixed the problems we need to fix and we won't have fixed it until we put in place resolution authority so that no financial institution is too big to fail. Any financial institution, regardless of type, can be wound down, uh, can be liquidated without hurting the rest of the economy and so the taxpayer will never have to put uh, uh, bail out money into a situation like this again. How do you think President Obama is handling all this? It's very interesting in the book. You write about some very long and thoughtful conversations with candidate. Obama in yeah. September and October 2008, and then the campaign ends, all communication cut off? Well, I was very appreciative of the fact that uh, both presidential candidates and, uh, and as you said, candidate Obama was, was so supportive of the actions we took and needed to take to uh, prevent collapse. And I'm very uh, pleased that the programs we put in place, for the most part, those were continued, and you know what, what he did was a continuation of those programs or logical extensions. As I said, I think that the economy is on the road to recovery, but I, I think we could also use a little bit more certainty, m more clarity and consistency, and I think that makes it easier for banks to loan, uh, companies to hire, uh, hire, hire employees. Your former employer, Goldman Sachs, has been taking an awful lot of heat. Uh, during this crisis, uh, a lot of Americans think that uh, are angry that they were made whole. For example, on what they were owed by AIG, yet um, a lot of other companies were not. This happened. Uh, here's Congressman Stephen Lynch at a hearing last week. And it just stinks to the high heaven. It makes me doubt your commitment to the American people. It makes me doubt Mr. Paulson, Paulson's uh, commitment to the American people. And I think the commitment to Goldman Sachs trumped the responsibility that that our officials had. To the American people. Goldman Sachs got all the money they were owed by AIG, even though they say now that they didn't need it. They've also faced some pretty pointed criticism on Capitol Hill for, on the one hand, selling securities to their clients while shorting them in the market with their own money. And we learned in the, 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 New York, the London Times this morning that the chairman of Goldman Sachs may be taking a $100 billion bonus. Is Goldman Sachs living up to its civic responsibilities? Well, 
Well, for, first of all, I'm not going to comment on any particular firm. I, I know nothing about uh, a number of the things you just uh, you just mentioned. Well, you do know but, about them getting but, but, their money but, but, from AIG. But, but, but I will say this: when I left Goldman Sachs, I severed my relationship with the firm, sold all my stock in the firm. My responsibility was to the American people, and with and in every situation, and and particularly with with regard to AIG, I I, I cared about one thing and one thing only, which is to. If AIG had gone down, it would have been catastrophic for the American economy. It would have taken down the whole financial system. Uh, AIG, it's a trillion dollar company, uh, it guaranteed uh, tens of billions of dollars of 401k plans and other uh, savings, retirement savings plans. Uh, it, it would have been it would have been a disaster. Mr. Secretary, thanks very much. You can read an excerpt of Secretary Paulson's book on our website at abcnews.com.